Hi guys, Will Terry here and I want to talk to you today about my computer setup. Um, before I do, I'll just tell you you can always contact me on Twitter. Uh, all my contact information should be right down here. You can always friend me on Facebook. I use my own personal account, uh, Will Terry. And um, yeah, so anyway, um, this isn't going to be a Mac versus PC uh, kind of a video because everybody knows that PCs are better. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I used to be a Mac guy. Um, I've got my iPad over here. Um, I would act, actually still be on a Mac um, if it wasn't for the fact that, uh, and it's kind of a long story, but I'll make it really short. Um, when I taught high school art in California, they gave me a, a PC lab to work in to teach Photoshop. And um, I felt at the time I had an iMac and I felt like this was back in this was an ancient iMac this was back in um, 2002 yeah 2000 no 2003 and um, I needed to upgrade I got the PC lab I didn't really know how to run a PC as well as I knew how to run a Mac so I bought a PC and once you go to one platform and you start buying software it's hard to switch back because you it's not only cost the computer but you also got to um, buy the software again so um, I stayed a PC, and uh, it's not better, but I am going to show you. I do think that um, it's definitely cheaper, and that's what I want to show you. Is that I want to do a couple of things today and show you how powerful it actually is, um, the new setup that I got and what I got and how much it cost so that you, if you're in the market for a computer, if you're trying to decide, I get emails sometimes, which way should I go? Should I go Mac or PC? I'm just going to show you my setup. Um, we have a really nice iMac in the in the house too, um, and they're really nice. And the one thing that I really like about Macs is that uh, because it's a controlled environment, things just work, and they usually work all the time. And uh, I'm sure there's people that have exceptions to that, but for the most part, you don't have as many software issues. Um, there aren't as many viruses written um, for the Mac. So anyway, um, let's get started. I'm going to show you my... I'm just going to drag this down in here and show you my um, my setup. So this is a brand new thing. And what I did was I actually um, have one of my son's friends who's really like this computer geek kind of a guy basically said I could build you a system for a lot less than you, what you could go and buy at Walmart or Target or well, Target probably doesn't sell computers, but like at Best Buy um, or even online, you know, what, what someone will build and put together you know, they're choosing all the components but you know you run Photoshop so you need something specific to what you're doing and one of my biggest complaints was is how slow my computer was getting um, I was on Windows 7 um, and anyway so here we're seeing right here um, we're seeing that it's got 16 gigabytes of RAM which I've been told I won't even use all of that um, that a lot of times they'll you know people will brag about how much RAM they have but their computer program can't even take advantage of it all um, and that the iMac we have has got 32 gigs, but it doesn't, it can't even utilize it all. Um, so really, um, it RAM's cheap. If you want 32 gigs, go with that. I've got a quad core processor. I think that's really important to have a quad core. Um, and I got a solid state drive, which is one of the biggest things. And it's also one of the things that a lot of people don't know about, um, is versus the, the kind of, uh, hard drive that everybody knows about that has to spin up and it's got moving parts a, a solid state drive is like RAM um, there's no moving parts so it's just um, it's like a thumb drive but it's just uh, they call it a solid state drive again I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about here but it makes your computer lightning fast and uh, the one that I put in or bought to put in here and by the way I, I got all this stuff on Newegg.com um, but uh, the one that I got was about 400 bucks uh, for this solid state drive instead of maybe like 50 or 100 bucks for a regular hard drive. So it does increase the price a little bit. Um, this is the the other thing that I got that didn't come that my other computer didn't even have. I had an onboard um, video card, but I got a uh, the 760, the GTX 760. Um, video card and um, it is it's another thing that makes the computer smoke and I'm gonna do a speed test and show you here in a second 
um, that what it does is it really helps Photoshop run amazingly well. It'll also, like I've got, uh, and I'll show you my setup too, I'll move the camera, but I've got like three monitors working and I can move things around seamlessly on my monitors and, and when I play a video on Netflix or in any other video like YouTube or anything, it's, it, it doesn't, uh, you don't get that flashing and that jumping or anything and everything is super smooth. Um, and so you can see, I didn't. I bought mine used from a friend, but this one here is two hundred thirty-nine dollars. My total setup ended up costing about twelve hundred bucks. But you could do it without the. So Photoshop's going to run really good with the with the graphic with the with that video card. And if you wanted to save money, don't get the solid state drive. The solid state drive won't help Photoshop run any better, but it will help with. Things loading, windows opening, loading, saving, getting files, you know, opening up files, opening up programs will work faster. But your video, the the way that Photoshop works and handling um, when you're painting and stuff, it won't really help that. So those two together though make everything super fast. So I'm just going to grab the camera here and do this ghetto style, and basically show you um, that this right here is what you're seeing here. Let me just move this back a little bit so that's my Cintiq monitor that's my uh, for one monitor that's my second one where I throw videos over there and then this is the computer over here and it's just a case that went on there so you know there's nothing fancy that you're gonna see about that but it's it's allowing me to run all these three monitors let's see if I can back up a little further here I can run all three monitors uh, seamlessly with this um, program and it never slows down at all so for what it's worth um, oops let's see here okay um, so let's get out Photoshop and do a little test here and see how fast that's this is I'm running Photoshop CC so there it's loaded up in real time and I'm going to go ahead and get a new document and I'm going to get one that is, and I already set this up, this is basically, since I'm a children's book illustrator, um, this is basically working at 300 dpi which is print size um, tw or 22 inches by 9 and that's a full spread so that's as big as I ever work. Um, you know I could do I could do a lot bigger than this, in fact maybe we'll, we'll test it and see how how big it'll go but this size right here if we look at the pixels which is really the act, the true size of your document, 6,600 by 2,700, and uh, that's a pretty beefy size document right there. Um, and that again, that's a full spread, so that's like a wide book if the gutter were kind of running down through it. And let's just get a paintbrush here and see now. Uh, let's see. Okay, so my it looks like the driver for my <laughs> Wacom tablet. Uh, didn't load so we'll we'll do a restart and get that going again but I'll just do it with the mouse and that'll be fine so we'll get a small um, let's just get a small brush right here and I'll just brush across this really fast and you can see that there's no lag time at all it's just it's just moving along with the cursor and sometimes what would happen is the, the actual cursor would move in front and then you would get the paint to, to follow and that's no good when you're drawing like that when it's not in real time but here's um, let's make that brush bigger and again it just it just tracks and follows the whole time the real test is when you go super big can it now you saw a little bit of lag maybe there that's where it's starting to get lag but again this is incredible and when do you ever need to make a swath like that I mean if I just paint on it it'll actually handle all those pixels in real time like that so it's just I've never had a computer this fast before where it can just really handle that motion um, let's make it bigger and let's just see and then you could do this test um, on your own so let's increase the size from 6600 let's go I'm gonna unlink these let's go all the way up to 10,000 by 5,000 so that's a beefy image. Look, you see how quickly it created it. But let's see what it's like to actually paint on this. Now this is a big brush. Look at that. It just paints. 
I'm sure if I go faster, no, nope, there's no real lag to, to notice. There's no way I could, if I had done this on my other machine, I would have made this motion and I would have waited as it chunked the paint along about this speed right here. So that's just incredible. Let's do let's do a restart test because I want to show you amazingly how fast this thing restarts with that solid state drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my camera phone and take a video of that. So let's do that right now. Okay, now I'm on my camera phone. I'm going to go ahead and just push the button here. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. 1005, 1006, there we go. I got that screen right there. I just click on that. So it's booted up. I just have to put my pin in. And there we go. That's how fast this thing starts up. So that was amazingly fast. And um, anyway, that's the, the setup that I have. Again, I paid about $1,200 for it, um, which if you compare that to a Mac, uh, from what I've heard, you can't buy an iMac that's this fast. Um, and you also can't go and buy this setup at uh, a store because what they'll do is they won't, they'll either won't put a solid state drive in, or if you do buy one with a solid state drive, they won't have a really good graphics card. They'll always cheapen up somewhere. So this is like top of the line stuff. You can get a better graphics card than what I have too. Um, but, uh, anyway, I hope that helps some of you. I've been asked about my setup and what I recommend. And this is basically the video to kind of tell you that, uh, you know, you don't have to spend an arm and a leg. Um, that you can you can get a setup that that works really well to paint in Photoshop um, for under fifteen hundred bucks. In fact, you could probably do it for under a thousand if you were willing to live without the uh, the solid state drive. But restarting is, you know, in, in such a short amount of time is for me is is so much fun to be able to do that. And so what I would do uh, is everybody has a friend that knows computers and that's capable of actually doing this. It took um, it took the friend under an hour to just throw all this stuff in the box and just plug everything in. Um, and so I think most people know somebody. I, I gave, took him out for a really nice dinner. He didn't want payment. Um, you know, he just wanted, he just said, take me out for a really nice dinner. So that's what I did. Um, but I think that when given the choice, like the last computer that I got, I got out of desperation because the one before that. Um, was getting really slow and so it was I was working on a project and I needed a new computer and I just went out and just got you know just went and looked at uh, a department store and just just kind of looked around and, and saw a computer that I knew would be faster based on the specs bought it and you know it lasted for three years but it was never ever as fast as this so from now on um, this is definitely the method that I'm going to choose um, it cost a little bit more than the setup that I could have gotten but it's like you saw it, it booted up in about five or six seconds. Restart takes a little bit longer. Restart's about 10 seconds um, because it goes through a few tests. From what I've been told, the, your computer does a few tests on boot up um, that when it's just starting up from a cold start, it didn't actually have to go through. Um, but I mean like a lot of times, and I don't know if you're like this, my other computer literally would take about four or five minutes for me to restart and so you have these little issues with your computer and you're saying oh, I don't want to close out of everything and I don't want to restart my computer because it's a real pain in the butt um, but with the 10 second restart if you ever have an issue you just restart it and you're you're back up and running if a driver ever um, doesn't load or something stops working um, you can just fix an issue with a, with a really quick restart that helps with your productivity. Um, that's one thing that I am looking forward to. In fact, I've been working on this for about a week now, and I've noticed that I just fly. I mean, it's just like I'm never waiting for Windows to pop open lightning fast. Um, when I save something, it just saves it just like that. Again, that's the solid state drive. Um, this is kind of my dream setup right here. Um, the only thing that I guess I could do differently would be to get a huge and pay a lot of money for a big, huge monitor, but I, I won't do that. These these uh, monitors, the one that I have over here, this a little bit smaller one, it's like $140, you know. So even these these uh, nice Samsung monitors are, um, and, and that's another thing I might want to mention too, is I got the Samsungs, um, and I've had, these are like my my fourth ones, because the color, I've found that the color is really feels accurate to me for, for what it prints. A lot of people will ask me, 
um, you know, about calibration questions. I've never calibrated my monitors. I've got these Samsung monitors, and again, they um, they just seem like the color is really spot on. Um, and when I see what I get back from my printer, from from what uh, the different publishers that I've worked with, when they when they publish a book, um, the color looks exactly how I intended it. So I haven't really had to go through that. I've heard that a lot of people have calibration issues. Um, and I really don't have any good advice there because I myself have never had to go through that. Um, so I, I wish I could help on that, but I, I'm, I'm no help on that. The other problem with helping people with a video on calibration is that everybody's setup is different. So if I'm helping, if I did have a good experience with calibration, chances are you have different equipment. It's not going to work the same. Anyway, that's it for this video, and I'll see you on the next one.